Welcome to another segment of AKT Celebrity Reads. Let me see. Let me get this right. Let me see. Now y'all be wanting to see my outfits. Let me see if I can show it. Or do I need to stand back further? So you can see my little thing. Let's see. Let's see my little thing. Let's see my little side. Let's see my little side child. <laughs> Show my little side child. Show my little, my little cooch cuddles girl. <laughs> Oh my God, it, it's so, so hot. Thank you. It's so hot in here. And I just, I turned the air up and the air whew, just went off. Hey, Ricky. And I'm sweating. I'm sweating so, 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 so hard. I don't know why I'm sweating, child. <sighs> I want to tell you, I've been working on this reading, and even though I've been working on the reading, I'm not finished with um, the reading. I, I wanted to do it now because it's been so pressing. You know what? It, it, it's so intense. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. And I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Um... I have to come back with part two. It's so sad. I am doing this on Nipsey's friend, Fats, the one that died in, uh, he died September 29th, 2017. And uh, Nipsey mentioned him when he was with the young man. I forgot that song, uh, the, the Rats in the Middle. Hi, Taylor. And when he walked the graveyard, he took a picture of Fats' grave. And thank you for the hearts. I love, 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 love the hearts. Hey, Nikki. And um, it really hurt him because Fats was the one that, told me that really loved Nipsey. They grew up together from what I'm reading. And Fats was his bodyguard. Fats was someone that Nipsey could really trust and depend on and Fats was working security at, at Nipsey's dispensary when uh, they said two cars, police said two cars drove by and one of, the, uh, one of the cars, someone shot out of the window and shot Fats and he tried to run into the store and collapsed and died. Now, this is really weird. I noticed that a lot of you, hey Nova, hi my baby, I noticed that a lot of you uh, put comments, you noticed that I said this, and let me tell you, several things have happened to me since I did the reading last week, so what I'm going to do is um, pour libation, because this is so, so, so intense for me, <sighs> oh boy. Yes, he loved Fats, and Fats loves him. This was really weird. This this is really weird how I found Fats. I found him in the last reading, uh, but I didn't know that I found him. Whew, I'm feeling lightheaded. Uh, this has been a heavy one, so heavy. I, like I say, I'm going to have to come back with part two. And then Eric Holder, I think he, did he go to court today? I think, is today the... 17th did it go today or yesterday okay oh i love the hearts thank you okay jt wilson
I have to because this is some heavy shit uh, that I've been dealing with. Let me tell you what happened. And I, I, I didn't know. I did not know that, that I said this. Until I went back and watched the video. I don't know if any of you caught it. But when I did the show, what was it like a week ago? I said this is um, July the 9th, 2017. I did not know that I said that. I really don't fucking remember saying that. I just remember I kept telling you all I was very, very tired. I was very exhausted. I was dealing like with a sinus issue. Kind of just bloated. I just felt awful. So I didn't even get dressed. I didn't feel like um, getting dressed. And when I went back and listened to the video and I said that, I said, I, 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 I didn't say that. I did not say that. I, I was looking at it and kept saying, I didn't fucking say that. I know that came out of my mouth and I know that it looks like me, but I, I didn't say that. I, I didn't remember saying it, but at the same time, I didn't want to go back and erase the video or edit the video and have that taken out. I said, okay, fuck it. I know I felt funny when I said it. And then at the beginning, I, I said, I was trying to say, uh, welcome to this edition of Alexis K. Tyler or AKT Celebrity Breeze. And I was like, it, 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 so I, I flipped with that. I twisted that. Go back. And then I had to say it again, AKT Celebrity Breeze. And I said, what the fuck? is wrong with me so after i did the reading i went back and i started listening and i asked i said that wasn't me what the fuck is going on and then i said okay somebody or something's inside of me so i said i, I started searching myself i said wait a minute it's a nigga inside of me it's a big nigga inside of me talking like this then i said who is your ass who is the nigga? Who is my inner nigga inside of me right now? It was fat ass. Nipsey friend. And I said, how the fuck? I mean, you walked the other friends in here and you walked Sandman the Goose in here. Why fat ass ain't walk his ass in here? I caught him another way. Why Nipsey didn't bring him in here? Because Nipsey has not seen fat. Nipsey had not found Fats. Fats had not found Nipsey up to now in July in 2017. So I said, you better take me back to where the fuck your big ass possess my goddamn ass. Because I'm in trance and nigga, you is talking through me. I don't even know what the fuck I'm damn saying. You just done took over my mouth and shit talking about some 2017. And I said, okay, July. So that's 7 9 2017 I said wait a minute so July which is the seventh month and I said is there something significant with the number nine and the number 17 or 2017 then somebody put on the video Eric Holder's quote date had been moved to July 17 2019 I said okay that's the seven the 17 and the nine along with the seventh month July I see Taylor and it wasn't that. They tricked my goddamn ass, nigga. I wasn't tired. I was tired, but I wasn't tired. I was in trance. The nigga was riding my... Those spirit were riding my... Oh, shit. Oh. Hey, pumpkin. Y'all not gonna believe this, but it's a hellhound in here right now. He's he gray. He looked just like a greyhound. It's a hellhound. From Route 66 and Route 66. He been in here about two days. About two or three days now. And he got his head. His hair and shit. On his head. His body hole. All the way down to the middle of his stomach. Where his real K at. Going back to his two leg in the back. And his tail is just bone. Ain't no meat or no skin or nothing on there. He be out there on Route 66 and Route 666. And his teeth look like hooks in his goddamn mouth. He eat, I'm 
I'm telling you when he came in yesterday, but he 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 wagging his tail like that bone that put his tail right there. He doing it right here to me. And that's why I got my hand like this. Because he licking my hand. He sniffing me. No, that's not cowboy. Because I told y'all somebody had been on Route 66 that no nip and had brought that death spirit down there. And this lady found a picture, as y'all see on my Facebook, with cowboy sitting on that bench and saying Route 66. And he got a 06 on his shirt, which is 666. That's, that's different. That's cowboy ass on that underhanded dick sucking shit. That showed me that he set up, he had something to do with facts, and he had something to do with nip. I think them were, them were the two main one close to Nipsey. No, I think he just had a coat date this week on the 17th. Eric, hold y'all check it for me. Correct if I'm wrong, because I seen something about it. 7-17-2019. And, okay, so he's standing right here. It's the lion in here. It's half lion and a half serpent. And Medusa is here. <sighs> okay. When I said, why, how you get on me fast now? He took me back up there. Remember the last reading where I said Bruce Lee and Nipsey was up there at the crossroads at Route 66. And then the sixth row come over and intersects. The sixth row will be Route 666. And the intersects go over Route 66. Fats was lost and trapped in the crossroads and in the dimension of the 666 Lucifer energy. He is literally cursed and trapped in the Luciferian spell. And a cube of yeah, I'm gonna do it, cube of Saturn. He's been trapped in the satanic dimension, surrounded by the hellhounds, because his death was a, a part of a Saturnian ritual and a satanic curse. And I'm also who else came in this reading was Anton Levey from the Church of Satan in L.A. And California, I'm not saying he did it, but there were people that practiced satanic rituals. This Satan is all over the top of this reading for facts. This is really tricky, really funny. Not ha-ha funny, but really funny the way it's set up and the way it is twisted. Now again, I do spiritual readings. I'm a medical intuitive. I'm a spiritualist. I'm an empath. I'm a channeler. Spirits possess me, getting me, talking to me. And so this is for entertainment purposes. This is a spiritual reading. I believe what I'm saying and what I'm seeing. However, this is on the spiritual level. Okay. So I see when I went out there to the 6-6, six, six, Route 6-6, six, six, and Route 666 intersecting at that crossroad in time when you're dealing with the satanic dimension and the rituals, Fats has been trapped and caught in the portal since, because he died on September 29, 2017. And what I also found out, you are not going to believe this, Fats was killed on a witch's holiday. The holiday, the witch's sabbat, is called Maybon. M-A-B-O-N. It starts September the 21st. It ends September the 29th. Fats was killed, shot to death, on September 29th, 2017. You see what I'm saying? Why I'm saying this? It's not even though it's a spiritual reading, you can go check what I am saying. That is the witch's sabbat. He died, get, look it up, September 29th, 2017. One of the witch's holidays, the last day it's on, is September, called Maybon, September 29th. So that confirms what he told me what I'm seeing, and then I found him on Route 66 and 666. So once I followed... 
Nipsey and Bruce Lee out there talking about the crossroads and talking about their two sons and their concern for cross. It opened the portal and as I came back home, Astro projected back into my body. I didn't know that I had brought some friends. I brought the hellhounds. Brought a couple of other satanic beings. And brought fats. Fats has been lost this whole time. I even, so I had said the date backwards. I said that Route 66. They're saying Route 66 has been changed to 491. I think I said got there 149 or some shit like that. And then I looked up Route 49. I think it was it's in Colorado, Utah. It's called Hell's Highway. It, it, everything I found out that I look at about this reading come up with hell or the devil. And also the Navajo Indians have a reservation out that direction. And they talk about the devil dogs and the skinwalkers. Now, a couple of days ago, I, I got up early in the morning to use the bathroom. Here we go again. A damn black wolf dog came in the bathroom with me and put his damn foot on my leg. Like the damn black panther Lucy put her paw on my leg. But he didn't, it was a he. So I guess the niggas don't talk as much as the bitches. Because he wasn't. Now, they're not bothering me. Let me tell you about this motherfucker here. I went upstairs a couple of nights ago. You know how when dogs uh, walk across the concrete or some tile, marble tile or stone tile. You hear that clicking and clacking. I heard some shit downstairs. Like I, I looked back down the step like some shit was clacking. Like some paws with some long fingernails. Tapping and scratching across my damn floor. Look, that's... Oh, hell. It's one of them. I'm going to tell you. When I looked down, I felt the dog in here. Within like two seconds, this fucker jumped. From the bottom, the floor, up the whole flight of goddamn step. This fucker was... They quick. You can't outrun them. It jumped up there and had half the body with the meat and shit on it. And then round the real cage all the way down. It was just bone and the meat was gone. That, it's standing there talking about, <laughs> See, he, he, he proud of the shit. He don't have no problem with it. He fuck with people. But for some reason, he not fucking with me, though. He just, he, he smiling. He glad to be like he, like he my friend. And he know I ain't going to bother him. So I'm real relaxed with him here. I know he ain't going to let nobody fuck with me. He, he like being talked about. He like I introduce. <laughs> he like I introduce him to y'all. They not gonna do nothing to me. He came upstairs. He jumped up there like within a couple of seconds. And when he got up to the top of the steps in front of my bedroom, I looked at him. I said, "Don't bitch, don't get scared now." Nah. Now, you done went out there on that damn route and shit open the wake to open the damn portal up. And when I looked at him, he smiled. I had my head down. He smelt my hand. He said he want to come in my room and spend the night. I said, well, shit, gone on then. You go for I do. You you can you can stay. Ain't no you. And then I said, I'd be scared of this motherfucker. But I knew he didn't want to come do nothing. And so he came in. He been staying here. He stayed in my room. He didn't bother me. He slept down on the bottom of my bed. He, he didn't bother me. And we've been talking. So, okay, I just saw Nipsey. He ain't standing close to the dog, though. I don't know how he feel about it, or he just don't like this. <laughs> but he got to learn about this. So, hey, Catherine. Then, so the black wolf came in. It was a pretty wolf, but it kind of looked like it had some dog mixed in it. And it had like some diamond eyes. Real pretty. So I, I let it stay here too, because I know that it meant something that was tied to fat. Uh, fats. I said, well, 
I'm going to wait a few days and let y'all, give y'all a chance to come in. And then them white, pasty-looking beings came in here again, along with the black ones. See, we got a lot of duality, again, in this reading, with the black and white checkered bold, the day and the night, the light and the dark. And you know, as we're dealing with, Okay, before the Mexican-American War, the main route was the Old Spanish Trail. This trail extended from Santa Fe, New Mexico to Los Angeles. So the sixth branch of the of Route 66 is the 666 is the number of the beast. We know that Satan, the 666 is the number of man. We're dealing with six carbon, six proton. Uh, we're dealing with, yes, carbon six, proton six, electron six, neutrons. Yeah, but the, excuse me. We're dealing with the carbon man. So we're dealing with protons, electrons, and neutrons. Six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. They require me to learn science. So, yes, we're dealing, that's, that is the chemical composition of carbon, 666. And that's the number of man. The satanic five-point flesh man. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. That's what we are dealing with. Okay. So I started, I said, I got to figure out why did I say, or I didn't say that, who the fuck said 7-9-2017. Okay, I knew one was a male. I knew that was fast. Let me tell you. Oh, and then I found, I asked somebody to verify it for me. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I looked at that video when they picked up Nipsey and the ambulance. I saw that number on the video uh, on that that ambulance was the number fifty seven. So you sell seven plus five, that's twelve. One and two is three. That's the occult number three. Um, three thirty one two thousand nineteen. At 33. So we're dealing with all them threes that come up. I just think that the 57 reduced to the number three. On the ambulance, they put Nipsey in. And then I looked at the office or the precinct or the district. It looked like I seen either E66 on some of the fire trucks. And then on one of them, I seen E266 on the ambulance. So is that the district of the... Uh, the, is that the office or the department number of the ambulance in that district that picked up Nipsey uh, 66 or 266? Because you can see it on all of the ambulances that picked them up. You see that occult number there, 66, 66, okay, which is four threes. Two, three make six, two, three make the other six. You see that? I peeped that right there the other day. Then, we are dealing with the reason the dogs are here and the devil dogs are here. We are dealing with the number 23. Heavy occult number. What is the number 23? The number 23 deals with, and we are in the period of it now, because guess what we are in for July up until August, we are in the dog days of summer. We are dealing with Sirius, the star Sirius. We are dealing with the DOG, and we are dealing with the G-O-D. We are dealing with the dog and the God. We are dealing with the dog star, Sirius, which we're dealing with 23, 2 and 3 is 5. Let's go back to a 5-point star. Okay, the 5 points dealing with Again, Satan, the beast. The dog days of summer in the U.S. dealing with the canine, and which is also Anubis, the dog god of the underworld that protects the dead and is at the four-way crossroads, four-way stop sign, four-way red light. It, the dog days, we're dealing with July again, just like we dealt with Archangel Gabri Gabriel, and Mikael dealing with July. Dog days of summer begin July 12th. They end August 20th, 2019. So right now we're in the dog days. Dealing with the Sirius star, the dog god, 
and the God dog. That's why they here. Even the God, the, the hellhounds represent the dog God and Sirius. They're saying the dog days of some of some of the hottest days of the year when Sirius is above and dealing with controlling the sun before it goes down. So you see they come in here. This is what I'm learning through fast. And, and through Nips and the Hellhounds to teach me. But they're dealing with the dog God, uh, gods of the underworld. And Anubis. Okay. Then some funny shit happened. It was, was it, the next day after I did the reading, it was for three days. Some weird shit was happening to me when Nipsey come in here. It was this woman beside him, but it, it looked like a white outline, like an angel, an angelic being. But she was standing on the left side, so it didn't look human. So I thought maybe it was an angel walking with Nipsey. So when he comes in and I look at him, but then I see the woman that was just a white outline with like had some wings. I thought that it was a lady coming with him that he was bringing to me to talk to or introduce. And I looked at Nipsey. I say, Nipsey, who, who is that? Cause it doesn't look like, it looks like a tall light skinned lady, but it's just an outline. I couldn't see any skin. And, um, what you call the dog days? Been using that checkerboard. Yes. Oh, I'm going to get to where the checkerboard, baby. It did the rabbit hole go deep. Matter of fact, that would be dealing with the leper's constellation. The hair constellation. Cause that came up too. So Nipsey looking at me and he's saying, he looking at, he didn't say nothing. He was looking at me like, I don't know. I don't know her. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, in the evening, he came to see me. I didn't talk to him. I said, Nipsey, who was the lady? And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. And the next day went by. Okay, so that was 7-9. I seen the lady on 7-9 with Nipsey. And he's saying, I don't know. I, I don't see. I don't know what you're talking about. Then that was the day I did the reading. Then 7-10. The next day, he walked toward me, the lady walking with him, but she's on one side. He, She's walking directly with him, but she wasn't with him. And I say, Nipsey, who's the lady? Because I can't see her tissue, no flesh. He's looking at me. He said, I don't know what you're talking. She's not with me. And then I look and I say, well, uh-oh. It's something wrong because she is over there with you. This is somebody dead, physically dead, or this is the angel or higher being they have with them, along with the higher self, thinking of me and coming to me. Hey, Sharon. Coming to me. They must be in the process of dying or preparing to die. Because I saw the template of a tall, light-skinned woman body. <sighs> like a cookie cutter, like her outline, but no tissue, no eyes. My, and he's like, she's not with me. I don't know. And I'm saying, are you playing tricks? I thought he was playing with me. And I was getting upset. But he said, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. But I knew they were over there. Or the template, they were getting ready to go over there. Okay, another thing I'm telling you about this, when I look at July 9th, 2017, I said 7-9, 2017, what do I see in here? I see 7 and I see 9 especially if it's true, they say Eric Holder just had a coat date on 7-17, 2019. Well, it's two ones. 
in July 17, 2019. And so, and it's a nine. So I said, I see seven, 11 on July 17, 2019. And I see 911. So I know something to happen on July 17. And seven, 11. And something already happened in July of 2017. So I had to flip it because I'm talking backwards. Or the spirit done jump my ass and just decide he's going to talk in my damn mouth. So, a few days ago, July 11, 2019, which was Sam Lell. A man called me. He said, Alexis. He left a message, kept calling. He said, I just, I'm sorry to tell you, but your friend, my ex wife, died today on Selma Lell. This was, he called me around. Five o'clock in the afternoon. So we're dealing with 23. Again, we are in the dog days of summer. We are dealing with Sirius. And the dog star. So, I'm... It's a two for three and five. I said, okay, call me by five o'clock. I said, what? I said, I know she didn't do this to me. I know she didn't do this shit to me. Because I will always... She's older than me. Just a few years older than me. But I will always get on her because she was so pretty. But she didn't know it and would put herself down all the time from childhood. The same kind of mama I had, childhood shit. And I didn't like her being that way. And I wanted her to grow and get over what she's dealing with because she's so powerful. She's so great. What you saying, Eric did. Mama, he's asking for the court to dig up everything. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I'm going to go, get into that because I know it ties into this. And I didn't believe him. I didn't want to believe him. I actually hung up with him and I called her phone number. Didn't nobody answer. And the last time she contacted me was a couple of weeks ago. And I'll keep this message forever. She texted me and then she sent me a voicemail. And she was saying, you think that I don't love you, but I do. You think that I don't want to talk to you when I don't call, but I do. I just really get mad at you. Sometimes the way you go off on me and fuss at me and tell me the things I need to learn and need to do to become great. I know you don't want to hurt me. I know that you're trying to help me, but sometimes I just don't want to hear the truth. She's like, she's always been stubborn about hearing the truth. And she's like, I don't want you to think I'm upset with you or have any type of ill feelings. And I immediately called her. She would not. That was like June. I think like June the 29th. Just a couple weeks ago. She wouldn't answer the phone. I said, I would never. I don't think that I would never feel that way. I sent her my new video. She didn't answer. She didn't text. She didn't call me back. So I knew that she was going through something. Um... And see, I had just done a reading on someone a couple of days ago, and they asked me to read their father, who had physically died. And I told her the father was very upset, and the father said, get ready. Become somebody very close in the family. Death is so close to you, I literally see the blackness on your back. She said, well, is it me? I said, no, it's not you, but it's very close. And the next day, she told me that a man in her family was found dead. So that was what last week, and then I'm looking at this being, and I said, "Damn, Nipsey, I'm sorry. You're right. You don't know her. That wasn't with you." But I knew she was preparing to go because two days later, I see the temple, and two days later, and that's how she looks: tall, slim, red bone, real pretty, but didn't know it, didn't feel it, didn't believe it, and I would just get on her about that. And we were supposed to see each other and hang out this year, and I was so upset with her. But I realized it wasn't my choice. It wasn't my business. It wasn't my decision for her to stay or go. 
I, I had to accept that, and I, and I asked him what happened. He said she just fell asleep. No pain, no accident, no tragedy. She just fell asleep. And he said the way it happened so quickly, she just laid back. It was like, wait a minute. Is she playing? Is this real? That's how, I mean, quickly. She just smoothly left. And I knew then when I saw her doing that to me, coming to see me and wouldn't talk. And it was a trip because the night, that was the 10th. I'm getting chills now. The night before she physically just left, I started talking to her in the spirit. It was about 2 or 3 in the morning. I said, girl, I miss you. I wish that we could talk. We would talk about the dead people because she could see them too. And she had started developing her gift. And I was so excited about that. And I had somebody to talk to about it. And I said, girl, I, I wish you call me tomorrow. Because, girl, we need to talk about this. And the next day, she comes in here with Nipsey. And that was about between 12, 1, 2, and then about 5. I get the call. And she's gone. And I was just cursing at her. I was so mad. I was like, could you do? I cannot believe you pulled this shit on me. And then I saw her a few more times. And then she left. And I said, well. I started to pray for her. I lit a candle for her. I said, well, you know that you can come see me. Anytime I'm always here, I'll always be your sister. I'll always be your friend. If you need me, you can always come. And I've had to accept that. I said, well, I, you know, I see this for other people, and, and they have to accept it. I have to accept it, too. So that was another thing dealing with that. When I, I'm just sharing you things, I'm seeing the, two, the July 9, 2017, and then that reduces to the number 8. The 8 is the infinity, dealing with the laws of karma, fate, and destiny. That eight, that infinity. Um, okay. And then she died on 7-11. And we know what that meant. Once they saw her in there like that, they had to call 911. I saw the 7 and the 911 inside of it. Now, I'm really thinking on a, this part two of Wendy William I did. And for the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl were here. And it really ended up going into some other occult things. Deeper things where I saw the 7-Eleven, the 911. Hey, Monica. And breaking down the occult and said, I said it was moving through hip-hop. And the deaf spirit was released. Because remember, L.A. came to the ATL in February. And the Super Bowl occult ritual was done. And I said that line is moving back from Atlanta, New York, and L.A. And it was going to affect real men and the hip-hop community and they were going to kill them and replace them with homosexuals that look like men but really like boys to seduce them in the music industry now i know why that shit tied to this because then nip that thank you just thinking about that then nipsey was assassinated a month later after i seen that spirit called the one argus and he has another side chithulu Came in here, and the L came in here through the CERN portal and told me this here. Now, I see this happening, and some of the same numbers have come up here with Fats. Stephen Giles Donaldson, known as Stephen Fats Donaldson. You know they're breaking it down for him. I'm talking about they dropping it like this motherfucker high. He over here again, the doctor. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Hello, beautiful high key. Okay. And also, Sirius is associated with Isis, the goddess Isis, and we are dealing with Orion, and we're dealing with Osiris, and Isis will deal with, we're dealing with Isis, Horus, Osiris, but also put Set in here, we're dealing with love, lust, and sex, which also ties into fats, being killed, a lot of envy, greed, and jealousy, revenge, and competition trying to destroy Nipsey's legal enterprise, which was the weed house, that the dispensary, 
that's what Fats was guarding for Nipsey. But I'm going to tell you, oh yes, and also when I said, saw the mummies, they look like white beings, they look like mummies, they have this bandage wrapped around them, it's a whole skeleton crew, and the skeleton crew, they look like big skeletons, they said they are tied to Black Magic and the K-9 crew. So we're dealing with the K-9 crew, which would also be... Anubis and Sirius, they are using the dog, <laughs> D-O-G and the G-O-D. They are using Sirius, which you know what Sirius deal with and you know who come from Sirius. They said they have Sirius A, Sirius B, and we are dealing with the largest part of Sirius the dog god, let me see, what it is to constellation. What I am telling you is very, very real. Let me just look, find this, we're dealing with the name, so I can tell you the constellation. Because I wrote all this stuff down, it's just blowing my mind. Hold on again, it is so long that I am not finished. Where, where is it? Where is it? It's probably right here in my face. Oh, God. What, what am I doing? I'm probably looking at it. Yes. We are dealing with Canis Sirius. We're dealing with Canis Major Constellation. They have Canis Major, Canis Minor. So when we're dealing with the Sirius Constellation, we're dealing with Canis Major. It's like the big dog. We have the big dog. And the small dog that is in the Sirius constellation. That's what we're dealing with right now. And then when they said canine unit. You are actually taking the, the DOG. Which is really the canine. C-A-N-N-I-N-E. And then you got the K-9. Using... The D O G Sirius constellation against you using the D O G against the G O D. You see what I'm saying? You are actually taking the constellation of that God, that melanated being, and you are flipping it upside down on the God Himself and using that to attack and kill. The G-O-D with the goddamn D-O-G K-9 from Sirius. The dog star. The black dog. And you know the black dog, we're dealing with Anubis and Ilegua. Also, the other side of Ilegua is Diablo. They done flipped it. Then I tell y'all, when I seen Nipsey's mother up there, at, BOT, uh, at the BT Award, I told y'all that Satan was behind her dancing and said, they ain't celebrating him, they are mocking him. They are celebrating me. This is my ceremony. This music is for me. The sacrifice and the ritual is for me. So we are not giving him because we had a chance when he was in his body to give to him and we chose not to give it to him. Then we acted like we were going to give it to him in the body and then we took him higher and higher. And now we are giving him the worldwide recognition and the fame after we have flipped it upside down and taken from the physical body. And he's suspended as the hangman upside down in the higher dimension. Then you see what I said, how they flipped it when it come to his assets, his businesses, his stores, and dealing with politics of gangs, dealing with low-class people, liars, treacherous thieves, and deceivers, organized crime, organized gangs, organized political elements 
law enforcement, dealing with law and order and policy. I have always told you that. And zoning codes, laws, and empowerment zones, and they were going to flip it. I also remember one reading I said I saw three demons sitting on the Marathon Continue sign and that a curse had been put on it to vampire off that lot and that property and that family through him and everything they put in now. They helped build it up and build this man shit up. It's some people that do that for living. Just like they do that on Wall Street. Will buy a company and then you wonder, well, why now the company has changed hand? Why all the employees have gotten fired and are now unemployed and homeless? Because the person, the company that, that bought the building and fired the employees, bought the company, don't really give a fuck about the employee because that's not the motive to buy a multi-million dollar, billion dollar company and then lay off employees. No, the motive is to find a successful business like that, buy it, eliminate all the liabilities. Employees to them, payroll checks, insurances, children, and maternity leave and sick leave, that's all a liability. Employees are not an asset. What it is to get this building, buy it when it's of value, Chop it up, sell it in pieces, make your millions of billions, pay your stockholders, get the fuck on. Because everybody at the top, the investors, the buyer, they make the money and that's what they do. Buy it, it's already whole and big and when it's, it's most valuable, chop it up, sell it, sell the pieces off, you move on to the next venture. Okay, there are people and I see them in this, very powerful women. Evil is fuck. Very affluent, have a lot of power and money. And in groups and families with power and money, they will take someone very talented and they will use them to create an energy to attract people that that person in that ethnic group, whatever group that listens to them and follow them, to get their attention, consolidate the minds of the people. Build that person up. Turn them into a superstar a multi-millionaire, give them things in the community that benefit the people in the community. Create a powerful conglomerate. Consolidate all these businesses within it That because a person wants to do that to reach out to the neighborhood and the people love the person. At the height of that, they knew at the very beginning, you're not really trying to help the person. You are raising them up and building this up. Then you're going to gut them. You're going to assassinate them. And then you, that's right. No, then you're going to chop it up. You're going to liquidate when it's at its highest and making even more million. And then you're going to vampire, drink the blood of the person, eat the organs of the person, thus having them that trickle out into the energy of all of the people involved. Hi, beautiful Ruby. I sis. And devastate them and then you're going to make it major so that you can make the people cry and you can make them feel pain you're going to excite and electrify the first chakra the second chakra you're going to move through the heart the solar plexus the heart you're going to move through the seventh chakra the crown and it's going to permeate all of that fear all that pain then they're going to eat that as well soul eaters Psychic vampires and eat the flesh of the people on an energetic level and then put a noose around their goddamn neck, hang their goddamn ass because now you're off guard, you're too heartbroken, you are wide open now because they have crucified and assassinated your leader thus keeping you in slavery and bondage and then if they can, they're going to put your goddamn ass Right where they found you, where all of the recipients and beneficiaries of millions of dollars for empowerment zones will not go to the minorities that are in that impoverished zone. That's why the richer will get richer. The poorer, the poor will get poorer and stay that way. It's being flipped because that 
was the agreement all a goddamn long. That's what he told me. You know, facts is quite interesting. He's not shy. He's very talkative. And when he came in here with the hellhound, he said, I didn't, I just found him. I didn't know how to get to him. Nip, see, didn't know he didn't see him either. Once they saw each other, they were so happy to see each other. He told me he, he stood in front of my hall and he put his hand like this. He said, I am never leaving his side ever again. They tricked me. And they lured me out of my body. He said, I'm not going to leave him again. I feel so bad because I was supposed to protect him. And that happened to me. He said, but I couldn't help it. I said, no, he understands. You were set up. And, okay. Oh, boy. So let me tell you. I, I started trying to tell you about the hellhound. And let me tell you, it's two of them. Uh, Kevaros, K, this is K-E-B-E, -E. says K-E-R, I spelled it wrong one time, K-E-R-B-E-R-O-U-S, Kerberos. This is a three-headed dog, a dog demon that rules three regions, water, air, and earth, past, present, and future. The dogs know this shit. And that's when he mentioned again, he said, I'm also with the K9, K slash 9, that we got that 9 again, three threes, upside down six. He said, a K9 German Shepherd with police. He said, and then Cerebus is a hellhound, or also the spotted. There are some of them that's black and white and spotted. Also, Kerberos is a small natural satellite of Pluto. It's the fourth moon to be discovered on Pluto. And it was announced one time by, on July, here we had in seven, the seven month again, July 20th, 2011. And then we're dealing with, so I put seven plus 20 plus 2011 will give you 13. It's also dealing with a heavy feminine occult number, which tells me also there were not just men involved in fats shooting, there were powerful, treacherous females Involved in fats shooting. Okay. And then the image shot by New Horizons spacecraft was shot July 2015. CD7s keep coming in these Julys in different years. And said, yeah, and, and Kerberos was verified as a new moon on July the 20th, 2011. Again, we, we coming up with those occult numbers, the 13. You notice in buildings, they don't have a 13th floor. It's there, but you will not be able to catch an elevator to a 13th floor. It's hidden. They believe it's bad luck. But what I'm telling you is, oh, JJ, you are so perceptive because that's where I'm going. That's exactly where I'm going. Hold on. I'm coming. Lepus constellation lies in the northern sky under the feet of Orion, which is Horus. It means the hare or rabbit in Latin. Chase the white rabbit. Remember in the Matrix, they told Neo to find us, look for the white rabbit. The rabbit hole, you don't know how deep it go. Because it represents a hare. The Lepus constellation represents a hare being chased by Orion or by his hunting dogs from Sirius. Constellation Canis, as in canine, canine major, or Canis minor. You can look these up. They're all over the place. That's why, and the hellhound is just so excited. He's, like, <laughs> he's what I say. <laughs> he knows. They all these things. The lepus or lupus. Oh, this is another one. The lupus. One is lepus, the rabbit, the hare. The other one is the lupus constellation. It is deep. One place says it's in the southern sky. And it's Latin for wolf. It is one of 88 constellations. There's another called 8844. And associated with the neighboring constellation Centaurus. Okay. All these beings. Powerful beings that are coming forward. Let me tell you a little bit about what happened to Fats. <laughs> uh, you're not going to believe this. 
I told Fats, let me tell you, I got confused because I had talked to a lady from L.A., and I'm trying to tell her, like I said in the last reading, I heard Tanisha say she knew about the Jack crew that went into Nipsey's store, and the lady said, no, you're not talking about the dispensary. You're talking about the marathon store where they sell the clothes. And I said, no, I don't think so, because I see marijuana. And she said, no, a long time ago, there might have been marijuana there or something in the store, or, you know, somebody was, was in there had it. I said, okay, so she confused me, because I said, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the dispensary, and she kept saying, no, it wasn't the dispensary. Well, let me tell you, it was both. Yes, lost on tees. It was back then. But I'm telling you, I saw the dispensary. It happened in both of the places. Now, I know it's true because where Fats was shot at 5900 block of West Boulevard and Hyde Park, that is not the Marathon store address. That's a separate address. I know that I'm not crazy and I looked it up because the dough looked different. Like a glass dough, like a flat. The mall dough is flat, but within the structure of the building or underneath the roof, right there with the breezeway there, this didn't have a roof like it, was, it wasn't inside of a whole building. The front door where I saw Fats was, it looked different, and it looked different out in, outside, and looked different inside. So I wanted to check it, and I verified it. But I saw two things. One thing... And I don't mean no harm, but I say what I say. I saw behind the building at Marathon, it was a piece of land, and it didn't have a lot of grass in front of it, but further back, you go further back, look, I saw a couple of trees or something. I have to look at the map to see what I'm talking about. I don't know if they're there or used to be there. It's not close to the back of the stove. It's kind of further back. I saw, I don't know if that's a house or building or something, but in the middle between the back of the stove and going backwards, it looked like a spot where like dirt. It ain't got a whole bunch of grass or flowers back there. And then you go further back, I saw a police hit. I saw a camera I saw like a radio where they could zoom in and hear far off. And I saw a black man that was a gang member, but he looked like he he used to be strong and powerful. This guy was very sick. I want to say AIDS, but I, I will say HIV, his Upper respiratory was messed up. He had yellow in his eyes. He even had worms. When I zoomed in real close, I saw tiny white worms squiggling and moving through the whites of his eyes. I saw the worms in his upper respiratory. I saw them in his lungs. I saw them in the brain. I saw them in sections of the spinal cord and the spinal fluid. In the vertebral column, the sky was very thin. He had stomach problems, and he wasn't able to keep food on his stomach. He was very, very weak, and he had a lot of high acid in his stomach. So one of these gang members was very sick. I don't know if he's alive now or if he's already died. But this guy was sick in a closet homosexual or bisexual. He would sell his ass for dope. And for money, he was an informant and he was trying to set Nipsey's store up. They were trying to catch him with drugs or some type of dealing like that in the store. And this informant didn't want to go to jail and didn't want to get in trouble. No, this is not Cowboy. This is another one because this is a lighter skinned one with short hair, kind of soft, fine like hair. They kind of got patches in his head missing. With worms and crusts and shit, like ringworm in his head. He was real sick, but he didn't want to go to jail. He just wanted medical treatment, and he wanted to stay alive. He didn't want to do that time in jail. 
because he didn't, this is one, only one, not the only one, informer that I saw that was a gang member. Hello, Adrian. I saw that back there, given, po given this wasn't the police, it was a detective. Information. Because he knew he didn't have a lot of time, and he was a drug addict. Very nasty looking. He was back there. I saw another younger man, lighter than I, let me see what I saw. A light skinned young man. Let's see. I saw on the side, look like by the alley, this, uh, a fence. I don't know if there's a little bush, a store right there at the marathon store. Saw that on the other side of the alley, somebody right there. I seen to cross the street. I don't know if it's a telephone pole there. It used to be a telephone pole there. There's another black young man that is a gang member informant. He's younger, short, kind of brown skinned at light, wears hair low. He is watching, saying like he cool. He is trying to set Nipsey up too to get some. Some dirty motherfuckers, man. These is these is uh black people. That I seen doing this. Then it's one, well, actually two, a dark brown skinned one, cowboy, and a lighter skinned young one that like to wear little white socks and white tennis shoes, be clean all the time, little shorts and little different color like t shirt, be clean and sharp all the time. He and Nipsey stove. I see that back at one time they could have got Nipsey in a lot of trouble because they were selling dope. It wasn't Nipsey. Because it was day Nipsey wasn't even there or out of town. They was doing slick shit over there in that boy stole. Creating crime, problem for crime to get Nipsey set up and fucked up. Because I see something happened over there. What was it? September, October of 2018. It was just a few goddamn months ago. Almost a year ago. Eight, nine months ago, some shit happened over there then. And they said somebody got shot over there then. And there was some blood on the ground, but none of Nip's employees would talk. Or I don't think they would turn over the camera. And I'm telling you, this this stuff was set up by people inside of Nipsey's gang. And it was women. They're treacherous, vicious women. And these are men that are involved in wanting to get a payday off Nipsey and steal and get money and there's a leader I'm telling you that is secretly telling them to do this kind of thing before they shot him to go do that to him try to break him down and shake him down and take his money but you know it's more powerful when you do it from within the organization have people around him that he don't see and that he trusts I'm telling you there are some devilish women in this okay that's at the marathon store. You know, another thing I wanted to say, one thing, and I know y'all are intuitive and smart, and I'll be over here doing these reading all the time shit, so a lot of times I be tired. I can't do that and write this stuff and research and go look. The person, one of the people, because there are several men trying to get up on Lauren and control her, and I think you all have figured out some of these players, especially with the articles that we are seeing. One of these men that I said snout powder and real freaky and do threesomes for some reason. I don't know if this is true. So if y'all can find them, y'all let me know. They was freaking out and doing group sex with some twin bitches. Unique and goddamn Dominique, baby. Freaking goddamn repeat. I seen it. I don't know who these twin girls are. They grown women. But they twin freaks that run in the entertainment industry and fuck celebrities. It's identical twin. Now, I don't know how the fuck I got that. I might not know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I seen two freaky dick sucking twin bitches. Fucking these celebrities and fucking at a freak party where a bitch bent over on her knees and another bitch, bitch eating her pussy at 360 degrees, 
eating a pussy from the back. Sucking juice out of back. And then out of pussy. And then another bitch kissing her in the mouth. While another bitch tonguing her in the mouth and a bitch eating a pussy from the back. The one that's kissing her in the mouth got a nigga fucking her in the air. In the front. This nigga's now. Mm. God damn, do it, bitch. Jacking his fucking dick, looking at that. And then the nigga, while she was kissing the bitch in the front, the twins like to do their shit together and double team and tag team a bitch. And I'm talking about, boy, they can eat a pussy. They'll lick a pussy quicker than a cat will lick his ass, baby. They lick a pussy out. Niggas watch them and learn how to eat cat. The way they eat a bitch, finger a bitch, know how to put... They fang up in a bitch G spot, having a bitch squirting and coming, and didn't even know that she was a goddamn squirter. You get with these two sex magic working goddamn freaky voodoo spell casting ass trends. This fucker had you floating on now, coming back to back, doing shit you didn't know that you could fucking do, cause these trends was probably sucking dick. And getting fucked in they pussy when they were about damn six and a half years old. Yes, yeah, nasty, but the goddamn, I mean, shit. Wiggle, wiggle, nigga. That's what make this shit go round. A freaky bitch. Now. So he told the bitch, get out the girl mouth. Stop kissing on her goddamn mouth because he stuck his dick in her motherfucking mouth. So then she get behind him licking his booty. While the other one eating her from the back. Nigga move high the way. Then the twins like to get out body greased up. Sexy high heel shoes on. Or well, they might come out there and do a tease dance. Twisting they motherfucking ass around. Shave. Pussy. Everything. Or bald head pussy so the niggas can see they dick. Seesawing in and out they goddamn mad. They on the molly. Pop the molly. Who I'm sweating. You know, you know, I don't like, I don't like a bitch that pop molly. I, at least you do. Bitch, don't come around me. With the bullshit. Because a long time ago, I really ain't trying to, you know, tell my goddamn son, but one time, he had a bitch in my motherfucking house. They were upstairs way back off because the bedroom was way back off in the fucking corner. I'm down there watching TV and as I'm watching TV, I feel some shit real hard in my pussy. And I said, oh, get up, man, and grab my damn pussy. I said, getting fucked in my pussy. I said, I ain't even got no nigga. The fuck me in my pussy. What the fuck? Mm. Mm. And they puts in my house. And it ain't me. Now I don't see nobody. And I don't hear nobody. But I could feel in the spirit. Somebody taking a stiff hard dick. In here. And if I ain't got no dick. In my house. Ain't nobody else going to get no goddamn dick. In my motherfucking house. I thought looking. I was looking for the dick. I thought looking for the bitch. Because it was quiet. And I didn't have no I didn't see nobody in my goddamn house. So I'm getting mad because I'm feeling somebody getting a dick in their ass. And they really having a good goddamn time. And bitch, it ain't me. I start looking around downstairs. I ain't see no goddamn body. I went upstairs. Wasn't nobody in my room. I didn't see no damn body because I ain't have no damn nipple. I found door closed. And I'm not. I'm trying to open the door. I know there was some bullshit because the door was locked. Open the goddamn door. Open the door the fuck. And then when he opened the door, all I smelled was just a big blanket of hot, sweaty pussy hitting me in my damn nose. Just a blanket of hot, funky, just pussy. That's all I smelled. It was just real steaming and hot. It was so much heat come out the room, but it that the heat would mix with pussy and damn funk and sweat, and it pissed me out. Because I'm like, why do I smell pussy all in my tongue goddamn room and it ain't mine? And it's in my motherfucking house. 
But I know I keep my hygiene better than that. Because, see, y'all out here, men say this, and y'all check yourself. If a woman getting fucked in her ass with some real good dick, and a nigga greasing his dick real good, and got a stiff, hard, juicy, nice, long, thick dick, and he hitting your motherfucking ass all the way down in your goddamn bottom, and bitch, you up there leaking and hollering and shit, and your pussy starts smelling real funky, and stay that smell like hot puss in the room, you need to clean your goddamn ass out. You, you need to clean your stinking ass out and clean your goddamn bowels out. Because your digestive system, your stomach, your intestine, and your pussy, you, when you leak that juice out, the room not supposed to smell like no hot, sweaty, funky, pussy smelling sauna. You got a sauna, it's hot, it's y'all sweating, it's steamed up, you purse priming and shit, and the room just smell like a sauna full of them damn tuna fish Subway salmon with that pickle and extra onion and tomato on there and that damn lobster. Yo, you shouldn't smell like that. And when I that girl with young and I smell that shit and I start getting mad. And then I seen her. She was a big bitch. I'm talking about a fat ass goddamn bitch. Now, I ain't got nothing against a big girl. But I didn't know my son liked them because he liked them all shape and size. He, he got them like Peter Paul. He fucks them all. He done had the big dog skin when out there. That fucker so big. With them long ass goddamn jumbo titties. And that big wide ass stomach. Had them waiting for him out there. I don't say nothing. They be older women too that like his goddamn ass. But I didn't I didn't know, you know, that he like a big one. See. So I, I I didn't I don't eat subway tuna fish no more. After that. Cause that shit, you know, that jumbo one with them damn jalapeno pepper on now, that extra onion tomato with that extra lettuce on the motherfucker and some goddamn mayonnaise. You know what I'm saying? I like all I like to hook that motherfucker up. But see now, since when I smelled her and all up in the deep recesses of her pussy leaking down like that, I didn't want no more subway because I didn't want my ass to walk around here and it's a hot day. I get this sweating and my shit smell like damn mayonnaise and she told the picante sauce and damn tuna. That's all right, goddammit. I ain't touched that shit since then. So she opened the door. He opened it up. Kicked it. Kicked it open all the way. So I could see this fucker who got this pussy. Smelling like this. This shit radiating down, dripping out of her ass. Done got the whole room fumed up. And then when I opened the door, this, this shit came out in the hall and fumed the aroma of funky fishy goddamn lobster salad pussy hit the whole goddamn hallway start creeping down the step i had to see this bitch i'm talking about the girl was beautiful she was a fat red bone i had one of the prettiest faces that i had ever seen and pretty white teeth a whole set of white teeth in her mouth pretty eyes pretty eyelashes had long hair. It wasn't no weave. She had natural long hair. A pretty girl. But had big old titties and about two stomachs with the navel caved in. You don't see some fat bitches when they get fat and they stomach, the navel go down in it and roll, cover around and mold around the goddamn fat. She was a pudgy, soft fat bitch. She wasn't no solid fat bitch. You know, they got a nice shape. You know, some bitches be fat, but they be fat fine like Curve and solid. This fucker was floppy and soft. Just about two or three rolls. Funky fat. With a stomach laid over the pussy. Just flopped down over it. So she was sitting on the edge of the bed. And had her legs open. Which made me mad. Because the shit eased out of there. So I said you had a girl in here and didn't fucking tell me. And he gonna say this. My friend, so I looked at her. I said, hey, how you doing? She thought, I know she had got her some good dick. She thought rocking 
her knees together, knocking them real fast. Time out. Hey, hey, fuck wrong with her. I said, get your goddamn ass out here in this fucking hall. I said, you fuck wrong with this bitch. I'm like, She's doing that licking her mouth and she's behind him. <laughs> I'm saying, boy, what the fuck? I said, you know what? You get her goddamn stinking ass out of here and don't you ever bring this motherfucker over here no more with her pussy. That I like, that bitch clicking her knee together and clicking her heel real fast. <laughs>
You know, y'all tell me y'all like my story. I have to tell you something now between them. I talked to Fats and I went to the store. Y'all ain't gonna believe this goddamn shit. One of the first things I saw, and I ain't finished talking to him yet, was the angel, fallen angel slash demon, Samuel. Or Samuel. Yeah, not Samuel, Samuel. And he is called the venom of God, the poison of God, the blindness of God, the archangel in Talmudic text, who is the accuser, who is Satan, the seducer, the destroyer of both good and evil. The Talmud text considers him a member of the heavenly host in Jewish lore. Samael is the main archangel of death. He's the death angel. That is his purpose. He comes to bring death. And he remains God's servant even though he condemns sin. Samuel resides in the seventh heaven. There's that seven again. And he's declared chief of the fifth heaven. There's the five, two and three, dealing with series. He rebelled against God engineered the fall of Adam and Eve. He's believed to be the father of Cain. Remember, Cain killed Abel and is the partner of Lilith and other demons. He's in the book of Enoch. He's one of the watchers. We're talking about spirits watch you and they're black and white, the contrast, the duality. And he likes to have sex with earthly women and he created the tree of good and evil to set up Adam and Eve because he was jealous. The demons and the angels are jealous of the human being. Okay. Also, when I looked at the dog days of summer, July 12th through August the 20th in the USA, and dealt with the serious dog star, the god star Anubis and Horus, I came up with the Egyptian goddess Sopdet, the consort of Sa. She's an old goddess. They've kind of changed it now, kind of rolled her into Isis. She's the personified constellation of Orion the Sirius. Their child, they have the child Venus, Sophet and Sa, the male and female side. And the Venus, the child Venus was the hawk god, Sopdu, Lord of the East, bringer of the new year, the Nile floods, fertility. Sa and Sopdet appeared in forms conflated with Isis and Osiris. You see how those were mentioned. Nipsey calls himself Osiris, Lauren, Isis. You see these keep coming to me? Okay. The rising of Sirius could be July 19th for the hottest days of summer. Drought, sudden thunderstorms, lethargy, fever, mad dogs, and bad luck. After during the dog days of summer, followed by... The heliacal rising of the star system, Sirius. Okay, now let me get to where I'm going with here. I done brought that, that shit up and tell you why. I was in the store. I was outside the store, projected there, as Fats was talking to me. When he got shot, let me tell you the weirdest thing was going on because there was a ritual, a demonic ritual done to kill him in the spiritual realm to line them up, and now we know it was on a satanic day. The satanic ha holiday may bond, September 29, 2017. So it had already happened on the high realms. This had been planned. When he was shot, when Fats was shot, they said they don't know who did it, but it was two cars seen. He came in to the store, fell. And they're saying this was around 10.45 at night. They called the police around 11. I'm not sure I could check back. 11, 11, 10. He was pronounced dead by the coroner on the scene. This is what they saw. Let me tell you what he saw. Let me tell you what I saw. The angel of death, Sam, Samuel, was sent to the store. He was sitting there crouching down, looking at Facts, and he was talking to me, telling me what was going on with him and happened. But I gotta finish that. I didn't finish the whole conversation with him because somebody else wanted to talk to me. 
the hellhound was there and we know this is well the six six and six 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 a double six and triple six energy that it was in because of the timing that i'm telling you what's going on in the dates and somebody had already went to the crossroads to do this and get permission to do this i saw some funny shit when samuel was laying there and he rolled up and got out of his body he looked at a white woman she had white skin and jet black hair. This fucker looked like Cruella DeVille. A cruel demon. That's what Cruella means. Cruel DeVille is demon. It's a female demon. Very powerful female, ruthless, vicious demon who thrives off of human and animal sacrifice. She looked at him and she said, well, 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 look at you. I've been waiting for you, waiting to do this to you. I am doing this to you to send you a, send a message. I didn't want to kill you. This is for Nipsey. Cruella DeVille and the bitch, goddammit. And she had on red, black, and white. The sacrifice color, white hair, one side, black hair, the other goddamn side. I said, what did I, what the fuck I done seen? And she looking down there, talking to him, and he don't know what the fuck going on. So really, I'm saying that to say this. He wasn't supposed to be killed. He really wasn't the goddamn direct target. He was the indirect target. It was really Nipsey. I don't think Nipsey was there. When this shit happened and it was one level of destruction for Nipsey to send him a message. And that sent the demonic energy into the store. It was getting ready to be hell breaking loose and go down then. And this is also a one of the organized crime groups that secretly dealt with human sacrifice. It was basically their calling card. Even though he was directly shot, I'm telling you, when it meant like that, it was a goddamn indirect shot. He was just a casualty of war, but also a shield that was removed for Nipsey. That was the sign to let them Nipsey know that they was going to take him down and take him out. Let me tell you some other funny shit I seen in there. Fats told me he had a funny feeling. A funny feeling like for a few days before that came down that day. And he seen something, he felt something in the air or somebody watching him. They had come by there that day. And I'm going to tell you another thing I saw. That is an inside job. There was someone working at that stove, at that dispensary, a light-skinned man. A real light-skinned man that's a kind of tall but kind of slim built that's a closet homosexual. That Nipsey had in that stove working. And I'm going to tell you, I seen one, a bisexual closet homosexual over there in Nipsey's stove over there at Marathon. So I don't know if he had been in the dispensary and in the marathon store. Then that, and he looked like a couple. One of them was kind of chunky. Like it was another gang member had a blue handkerchief on. Kind of had a fat stomach. But they was fucking. And they, the boy was light-skinned but was shamed of being gay. It was two of them. The older light-skinned man that's a closet homosexual is not a shame. It was a younger one also seen inside the marathon store. They were working and dealing with clothes. But I don't think Nipsey knowed it. Uh, then I he was around Cowboy and I said, so that what that was, Cowboy? You secretly want to fill on Nip? Booga, booga, boo, hootie. Boo, hootie. You, you want to fill on Nip? You want to play in Nip ass, Cowboy? Is that what that is? A couple of y'all liked it, Nip. But y'all know that bum one with that goddamn shit? Did y'all wish that you couldn't fucking say nothing, but that was another thing that you felt some type of way about? You had some kind of high school girl crush on Nip? Want to fuck Nip? Want to be his boo thing, his boo daddy? I don't know. 
You want to dig in their ass or something? Because Saint over away. And it was a light skin. And I said, no, you. So, so it, it, this nigga here and cowboy don't want to goddamn fill on them. I don't know, y'all looking at a nigga on the low. Wanna rub through it, wanna grease his hair and braid his hair. Yeah, his boo thing, his boo daddy. Braid his hair, just like R. Kelly had that girl greasing his head and braiding his down head on that port. Wishing I could hold, hold you now, but you know that nigga went with that shit. Cause I'm, I'm seeing him. Still for the shooting, I'm seeing him. Seeing a light-skinned nigga in the dispensary that worked it there. The nigga was inside. And then, I seen a blue carpet on the floor. It was some thin, cheap-looking blue carpet. So it might not have been a real blue carpet, but I know it was symbolic. Underneath Fats's feet, before he got shot, I seen about the color here. Blue carpet on the ground that tell me that it was one of them because it was blue. So that means somebody in there on that side right there crippled with blue that were with the setup on the inside that know about it, the time and everything. Then I looked above the door for fat when I signed and I seen a, a light bulb and it was blood red. Like you got the freak eternal blood on the red light. That when you finna freak out then that red light special. The red light, it turned red at the top in the front of the door. And I heard a bell. So I don't know if the dispensary had a doorbell, a chime, a symbol or some when you open it and the blue on the bottom. Which told me that it was blood and crib coming out that store that was outside that had something to do with it. Then they showed me in the spirit I looked by or behind Fats's foot. And under the heel, it looked like it was a lump in the middle of the stove under the blue copy, which is symbolic. I felt some moving, like a lump of powder, a lump of dust, dirt, or something that sweeped up under the copy. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Sweep up under the copy. When you sweep something under that you don't clean up, it's a secret. It's something hidden. You're trying to pull something over on somebody, trick them, don't want them to know that you got bats in the goddamn belfry. When I looked in the spirit up under the lump, under the blue carpet, which told me they was cripping, had something to do with this here, I seen the rat. A goddamn rat. Then I seen dust round the rat, and I seen some miniature skull heads. White skull heads with black eyes, black nose, black mouth. Which tell me it's some rats that was secretly in the stove pulling the wool over nips and fat eyes, setting him up for death. That's what happened the night that he got shot. It was for Nipsey. The, 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 the shit had been put in play. Let me tell you something here that I wrote. I hope I got enough time with this. When I looked at the Cruella de Vil, that was 101 Dalmatian. 101, that gives you an 11 again, which is the tower, and which is the high Luminati number, which also would represent the tower in the tarot card. Sudden and abrupt, violent endings and even death. That's what she brings. You are dealing with the Greyhound, the Hellhound, dealing with Cruella de Vil, serious Route 66, Route 666, Black, red, and white. And you look at a cartoon and that's what she wears. In the cartoon. Okay, and you also deal with Cruella wanted to kidnap 99 puppies. Upside down would be what? 6-6. Six, six. To skin them to make her fur. Which would be sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. She comes from a prosperous, notorious family that has a $6 million net worth. So the 99 puppies... And the six million would give you six six six. She's a very wealthy socialite. She has a chauffeur driven driven car that is black and white striped like a zebra that gives you the duality like the checkerboard. Cruella Deville 
said it has the loudest horn in London. So she's from London. She has a glamorous, she's a glamorous London heiress. Her house looks like a luxurious version of hell. She likes to murder dogs and cats. She has a white cat, Sammy cat, that she loves to abuse. There is a sequel to 101 Dalmatians called The Starlight Barking Sequel to 100 Dalmatians and Patches London Adventure. The Dalmatians wake up and find humans in deep, unnatural sleep. They hear barking of Cad Pig and London. These are characters in the book. One name is Cad Pig, one name is London. The Prime Minister has become her pet, come Cruella de Vil's pet. She informs people all over the country, and she reveals that there is the same phenomenon of people becoming unnaturally falling into a deep sleep. And she summons a delegate of dogs to London. One of the characters' name is Pongo. One is Miss Us. She calls those two to investigate Cruella de Vil, joined by Tommy and the white Persian cats and several dogs as they find her at a home sleep. They travel to Trafalgar Square where they address from Nelson's column by, listen to this, they were summoned by Sirius. This is actually in this fucking children's book. Sirius, Lord of the Dog Star. You can't make this shit up. It's in the children's book. Of the Dog Star, which tells me if somebody black, who invites them to his home to evade nuclear war. Y'all, I want you all to start looking for any type of radiation leaks in California. Okay? Any part of California or near California. Hey, Infinity, I love you too. To notice, are there any, what would it be, nuclear reactors? What type of, what, what kind of plants that, could possibly cause leaks in radiation. I'm telling you this. I want you to look for it because something is going on in California. And something is going on with the weather. And I don't know if something that's going to happen with the earthquake because those spirits are loose out there. And Sirius refuses to hide. Listen to this. Three stray dogs tell Sirius, and Sirius said, we can't abandon the humans. Three of them. There's that, that number again. And then I looked up, what is Trafalgar Square? Trafalgar Square is a public square in the city of Westminster, Westminster, London. This is true. You can look at that. Built around an area formerly known as Charing, or Channing Cross. Channing, Charing Cross commemorates the British naval victory in the Napoleonic Wars over France and Spain of October 21, 1805. Charing Cross is junction in London where six routes meet. You hear this here? Okay. When I talked to him fast, I saw... As Fats fell and was dying, I looked at Fat left eye. When I looked, I've seen something I've never seen before. Fats inside of the eye, I saw a five-pointed star. The pentagram was inside of his eye. And he opened his eye and he lit up. So I could see the five-pointed star. The woman that was standing there, the cruel female, thought having long teeth like a vampire to vampire on him and steal his soul. And I saw the mirror in Fats' eye behind the pentagram. And that's how I looked through it. And I saw the woman and she was taunting him. Because she's like, there's nothing you can do now. You're dead. I did the ritual. I pulled you out of your body. Well, well, well. 
What are you going to do now? You with me. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? He saw his body, but he knows nothing about these types of things. So he sees us and he's trapped. And I saw a pyramid that this woman had with an underground chamber. And above it, it had a black sun. And at the top of the sun, it has the clock. It is 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, then go back up to 12. They kill him. The ritual was already going on. It was lined up above the store and all around the store. And between 9 p.m. and moving into midnight, that is during the period of the witch's ritual. That 15 minutes. Then 5 and 1, he would go again at 6. With then 2 threes, 33. That they decide to take him out. Doing the ritual of the black sun. Which you are dealing with Saturn, Satan. He know now. He started talking and showing his mother is very angry. His wife with the baby is very angry and they're showing me a drug addict that's involved and a love sex addict that is involved. So you have several things going on here. Pussy money, weed and dick and obsessions, fear, jealousy, and a desire to extort someone out of money. And if you cannot extort the money, if there are families involved here, that's what I am telling you. There are business families, political family, organized crime family, and law enforcement that are all involved in this. So if you cannot extort the money, you'll rob, you'll kill you're taking, that's right, smoke your seed, baby. You uh, will take it and you will bleed the person dry financially from the inside out. That is what he is saying. He is as fat as laying on the floor with a star in his eye. A five-point star magic ritual was done on the astral address. They first started doing this on the address. I see somebody watching this. While this is going on. And then Fats is telling me he's very cold. He's lonely. He's hungry. He doesn't know where he is. So someone sent me a picture of him in the grave. I go down under the ground in the grave to talk to Fats. Or to see what I see. Fats is not at peace. There's another man in the grave with Fats. So if they if he's not inside of the coffin, but it looks like there's another man buried either in that grave or close to it. Cause I saw two people on the tombstones. I didn't I didn't know. Or y'all correct me if I'm wrong. There is another male's name that got his name at the top and then underneath it. Is his name Stephen Giles Donaldson? So I don't know who that male is. They are fighting. It's several ancestors, and I don't know what ethnic groups that fat have. But it looked like I saw some of his relatives that may not be from California, that may be from the islands. One of those countries that have the islands. I don't know if the Caribbeans or uh, uh, African country. I saw the different ethnic groups in Fat's family because I could see them in the casket. And I saw some of them coming over the water and over the sea. And some of them might have been slaves because they was on the ocean. They were fighting on the ship and had jumped off and was down in the water, held together, holding them to each other. Not at peace, but fighting and not at rest. And went he Jamaican, thank you, baby, because I don't know much about him. 
they mad at fats. They attacking fats in the in the the the, the casket and in the ground. They said, "What are you doing here? You are not supposed to be here. You are not supposed to be with us. We know the timing of all births and all deaths. This is not the year you're supposed to come here. This is not the time you're supposed to come here. They put you here prematurely. You have no business here." Why are you here? You need to go back where you come from. We know you can't go back into the body, but you have no business here. It was not your time to come here. Somebody prematurely set you up to take your life out of your body, and now you are in limbo, and now your soul cannot rest. You are lost. Your spirit cannot rest. I said, what the fuck? I have never been inside of anybody's grave. And seen the ancestors of the person's grave fight their ass and tell them to get out the goddamn coffin. They are so upset about this. And he has been fighting them since he was put there in 2017. Because they know that what happened to him was not for him. They are already not at rest because things that happened to them. And that whole bloodline is not at rest. has has been violated. And he's telling me this. He said, I'm going to be here. As long as he come see you, I'm going to be right here with him. I say, well, then, how are your being in nigga? I don't give a fuck. You can stay here. You can watch over. I ain't going to buy this goddamn ass. I ain't nobody finna fuck with him. So, but if you feel like you need to do that, I know y'all love each other. I know y'all miss each other. And I know you've been in limbo bound. There's a mention at the crossroad and you couldn't get out of here and know where you were. He didn't know where you were. Stay here with it. You're welcome here as long as you want to. I like you. I know you cool. I know you love Nipsey. He love you. Y'all miss each other. He said, I don't want to be in that grave. And how his ancestors wouldn't even embrace him in the grave. They were fighting with him. They're very hurt. That they, they know that it was a setup. Okay. I'm looking at this. I said, Lord, have mercy. They need healing. They need to be unbound, and he needs to be unbound because it's so crossed up. He said, I'm so cold. And I seen him on this platform look like at this train station, which I know would be a crossroad. He won't get on the train to go to the other side. He cannot go to the other side because he is in limbo, not at rest because he was murdered. And as he's standing there, the train was going by so fast. Like I seen that same scene at the Matrix with Neo. His clothes are blowing real fast. The wind is cold. They're rippling. His skin is rippling because it's moving so fast. But yet he's not moving. He's standing still on the platform on a tightrope. And I said, you don't want to get on the train? He said, no. I don't know where I'm going. And I'm stuck. And I'm cold. And I'm tired. I'm tired of going through this. I don't want to stand here at the crossroads. I don't want to be on this platform at the train station. I'm not getting on the train. He was high above in the mountains. Just like Nipsey went into the mountains when he was in Mexico. And he feels like he committed suicide. He feels like he let his family down. His mother's angry. She's violated. She feels so bitter and enraged because she doesn't can't believe somebody took a son. She don't know what happened. He misses his child, but he mentioned another child. So I don't know if it was another woman or if the wife only has, has more than one child. He went to his mama house, went to summer house at the funeral. He saw people crying. He saw people lighting candles. He could see them. He wanted to talk to them. They couldn't see him. They couldn't hear him. He turned around and got discouraged and he left because he felt, what's the use? He wasn't in his body no more. And they couldn't see him and hear him and he didn't have anybody to send the message or to translate the message. So in heartbreak and sadness, he put his head down and he walked away because he could not create. He said his stomach, there's something wrong with his stomach and his guts. I don't know if he was shot there. In the middle of the body, he said his stomach feel hard, like they got a whole bunch of paper stuffed in his stomach. I don't know when they if they did an autopsy and bombed him, did they take his organs out and put paper? Cause he said that's what it feels. He said, I can't feel my stomach. He said, especially on one side. He said, my chest is numb. I'm numb in one eye. He said, I can't breathe. 
He gasped for and he said, Nip, I'm sorry, that bitch set you up. I couldn't stop it. I tried. I, I saw the crew, I saw the drive by long before it happened. I got a bad feeling. I said politics. DNA is really somebody in that family, organized crime boss and family infighting. They said it was a godfather. A godfather. The head of a crime family that set this up to take over drug business and destroying it from the inside out. And he mentioned the baby mama. See, I don't know which one. I ain't going to say no goddamn name. But he feel like, the, and his mama feel like his son was martyred and a victim of a crime that she got no justice for. She can't rest the mama very bitter. The man that ordered this is very narcissistic and self-absorbed, but for some reason, if this is not just a woman in the spirit realm, Cruella Deville ass bitch, she's possessed with these demons and she called these demons to do this job. And then I didn't finish with Eric Holder because I had to write this down. And again, I, he said he's being chased. He said he can't even reincarnate under the circumstances. A red dragon keeps chasing him. He said it was a conspiracy. He said I refused to give up. He had to, he was just holding on for somebody to find him and connect him with Nipsey. The mother's still seeking justice. She's very angry. She knows her son was set up. And now they know that. I hate to keep mentioning this, but they're saying a powerful drug family and they mention narco, narco PD, informants. So they just somebody in there, an informant that plant gun and drug, and it's had something to do with his plant, the weed plant. Something about that plant and said they're stealing, they want to steal that plant. Which would be that marathon, that OG, that we, they wanted to take that boy, we, and in money. If they could not splice it and duplicate it, they want to take that boy stuff. That's what Fats was saying and that he know. And a little bit, because I'm going to come back, I know I've been on here a while. I don't want to take a lot of time. No, I don't, I don't know what time it is, but I've already taken a lot of time. Um, I will say one thing about Eric Holder's case. Eric is trying to distance himself from this situation. And the lawyer, I don't know if it's a, I see a female lawyer, but I saw, I see a male that the female is also consulting with and setting up the conspiracy on this it's a distance himself away from it to say I didn't do this I couldn't have done this and blame the victim to say Nipsey did this to himself they're going to try to trash him and they're going to try to see can they move this to another jurisdiction and really put it off to let it cool off and have a jury that doesn't understand and it's from not from the culture in the community to get this nigga off also, this lawyer is thinking about money, using this case to build her career, build herself up and go up on a higher level from this case and getting Eric Holder off by pushing him away from she looking at dollar sign and money and also this man Stingin ain't got no money. And this lawyer right now, the lawyer that's helping him ain't got no money. They're not making a lot of money. So they stingy and they fight it because they feel like if they win and they turn this in their favor, they're going to have a bigger career and make a lot of money off of fucking over Nipsey. And trying to destroy this case by finding things on him and justifying and saying that that day and time he couldn't have did it. These people did it. These people are out to get him and trying to get evidence. That this man did this. And this is a partnership and an agreement made off this man's death. Made off of his assassination and he was fucking somebody. Eric Holo was fucking that girl. This was some type of agreement they had based on some 
partnership they had then, a partnership that they have now. They partners in crime. They all got the same story. They are all lying and going together. It's, it's several gangs here. These are gang members that have got together. That Gov is a gang member that is with Eric, even though she claims she's respectable, she just worked at the mental institute where Eric was getting his treatment in. No, she came over there to do that with them. She was jealous of Nipsey too and wanted to hurt Nipsey, but was also attracted to him. But she know he wouldn't give her the time of day. She knew that was never going to happen. Um, they were never going to have no type of day. He didn't even look at her like that. To me, she looked like a rat. And that's exactly what she is. So she had an attitude about that. Eric had an attitude about that as well because she mentioned something that she had said that he was attracted. And she wanted to take a picture with him. And this is also around an obsession with Nipsey, a sexual attraction and drugs, a drug addict. I believe her and Eric were not in clear mind. I think they both had got high. Either they were smoking something or had taken something else to seduce her and lure her. She wanted this rep, this star attention to do this to this man. She's lying. He's lying. They agreed to do this together after somebody, and we know the suspicion's big you, had something to do, was behind putting this idiot, this useful idiot, up to do this and now things have gone this way the money the recognition this is all turned upside down on him this is a heavy burden to him females are lying to him females are hiding and doing treacherous things there's going to have to be some problems even though they made the agreement they're going to be problems between her and eric is already in fighting and disagreement and then for some reason i don't know who eric holder's family is but i feel like they're very embarrassed a very ashamed this has created a black shadow own day family now they cannot rest and have any peace and even talking to other people in other states eric holder family talking about people talking people in other state about going somewhere or hiding or changing their identity it's, 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 it's all his family is ashamed and disappointed they want to now disown him because they know this fucker here will bring death to the whole goddamn clan will wipe that whole namesake out. So this is, oh boy. You've got somebody that snuck somebody in the inside of Nipsey's camp that hooked up and one is a bisexual or goddamn closet homofucking sexual that light skinned and young. He ain't skinny, he ain't fat, he kind of got a medium build, he a little bit timid, don't talk too much, he can be kind of an introverted and a little bit shy, but I see him round Nipsey, and you know I heard something today, a girl read some of that transcript where they described Nipsey's wounds and said it was 11, 11 possible gunshot wounds on that baby, and said... It was abrasion scratches. Do you remember last week I did that reading? I said I got up close to him. He told me to look at him. And I seen all kind of scratches and bumps and bruises and shit. Remember I said that shit and then I said, well, let me shut up. It's probably me. The girl said it was in the report. All kind of abrasion. The man head and all around his body. All kind of scratches and bruises and goddamn abrasion. I thought it was me. When I told y'all, hey, he had me in there, and then he was on the table, looked like an autopsy, like the metal tray we were laying on, and I seen scratches all on that baby body and on his face. Then I said, why I see if he just got shot? Why the baby got bruised and scratches? He told me he got to fight him. Because you look at the first reading I did, I said that he was killing that stove. They had been in the stove. It wasn't outside on that tape. 
I said, baby, why you got the scratch on your face? All around your body? He said it was fighting me. He was fighting, baby. That's how he got the scratches and the bruises and abrasions. He told me that they shot him in the back. They shot him in the front. They shot him in the side. They shot him in the back. And I seen somebody had tried to grab him. Lord, have mercy. And I say, it's hard for me to tell her. He said, I want you to tell them what they did to me. I said, you don't, uh, you, you don't mind if all this stuff is public? He said, I want them to know what they did to me. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not afraid they need to know what they did to me. I said, you got in a fight? He fought him before they shot. Wasn't outside either. I said, in the first video, I seen him on the stove. I seen Cowboy and I seen Eric in the stove. And I seen Nipsey got it and he looked because Cowboy looked at Eric and they ambushed that man, got him over there earlier. See, I don't care what nobody say. I love Grandma. I bleed Grandma. Grandma said Sam took off. I don't care what nobody say. I believe Grandma. She said Sam left in the morning. And we know that if the morning is there, it's the evening in Atlanta. Because we three hours ahead. Grandma ain't lying. I, I don't care. I don't believe nobody. I believe Grandma. He said they lured him. I think that the first time I did the reading around April 3rd or 4th or something like that. Because when I did it with Martin Luther King anniversary, a day or so after they shot him, they assassinated him, he told me that I seen it through that mirror. And that that T-Mobile, somebody was standing in that T-Mobile stole, I could see they shadow through in the spirit through that mirror. <sighs> then I seen that, he said, look at me. My toy told me, Lena, look at me. When I seen the devil and, and Mikael come out, I said, Man, why your face scratch up, your head scratch up? Why you got these cuts all no, down around that baby body? Cut all down and bullet hole. Because you see that first when I said that boy was shot right here. He was shot right here. I saw him two times right here. One over here and I seen it right there. And then I seen it down here. And then I seen it on the leg near the artery and near his gut and the pelvis. And then she said it. It was shot three, four times down here. One by the navel, one on the leg, another one in the gut. Uh, the one uh, above the navel by the navel, something went through the liver, through the back. Then some of them didn't go nowhere. Because I saw a lot of internal bleeding. That baby said he fell backwards. I think they look in the video like he fell forward. Because he was shot in the goddamn back and the back of the head. Even if it didn't go all the way through, I know what the fuck I saw. I knew I said the first one was a central nervous system disorder and I saw it in the back. Yes, it was. They knew they had to do that because that boy had got away. Who we? Who we? They couldn't let that motherfucker get away. They know how he is. Woo, boy, let me tell you who a motherfucker is. I ain't got time to get in it. Goddamn DeWitt Ashkedon. The daddy. Boy. That motherfucker, they're crucial. He talk quiet and you do your thing. Mm-mm. They ain't that spirit on Nipsey. I ain't never seen no shit like that. That come from the daddy. Great. Great, great, great goddamn granddaddy. At them tombs over there in that ground. Over there in Ethiopia. And, um, goddamn. Y'all want me to come back or y'all want me to put the goddamn charge in? Because, see, I probably need the goddamn. Just come on back with this shit. Because this shit so off the goddamn chain. I can't finish it all tonight. I think I done told y'all enough for y'all to, you know, Simmer on a little bit. I don't. God damn. How do you put the thing in here? I don't throw y'all enough. To meditate on. You think so? I think I'll come back. Because a lady. Gave me a donation to do. Ira Kelly. 
I need to check back in. Look, Nikki, y'all don't keep me up all goddamn night now. The damn snake done sat down. The dog done goddamn sat down. Nips ain't still didn't come over here with a goddamn uh, hell. <laughs> where the hell hound at? Why y'all tell me to put my goddamn chart? Look, I done sit on here and be trying to read y'all and entertain y'all goddamn ass. I done told y'all enough. I'm going to come back in a couple of days because I got to do Ira. Oh, baby, the dad ain't no play that. Look, Nipsey, he looked all these years like a sweet boy. And you seen him walking through the street with his braids and shit when he was a young boy. All that pretty hair and some of them be sticking up. You know, he just walked the street and that baby just talked to everybody and everybody. But what y'all don't realize, that motherfucker had a spirit on him. I love y'all too. That's right. That been riding on him. That come through the daddy side. That spirit mad as hell. Yes, we got to pray he get justice over there. That's what the war is about. It's that spirit that Nipsey is carrying from the daddy. But see, I can't get too much in it. I don't want to get too much in that. Because that spirit won't blood. And it won't war. And it's goddamn coming for war. And that thing is walking all over California. I seen, remember I told you on the mama. That wake the mama up out of sleep at night. And. I'm tired of Alicia. Y'all keep fucking with me. But y'all like when I fuck y'all dirty as hell. Like for me to fuck with people. And tell y'all damn story and shit. My son gave me permission to tell that story. That's why I don't told it before. But I know y'all ain't heard. Y'all knew I told that story now. And, oh, yes, baby, that thing is in his bloodline. That fucker looked just like the devil. It came in here and woke me up by 5 o'clock in the morning and sat on my goddamn bed smoking. He was smoking to make sure that damn Kush OG and smoking him a damn cigarette. I think he had rolled him a blunt. It died, you roll away, you take that cigar, that blunt and stuff, and he crunched some of that damn marathon OG up in there. And I said, he woke me up. I what the fuck? That thing started turning. And I looked at his ass. And he crunched that shit up. He smoked that, that cigarette. And I seen the smoke go all the way down. You know how a motherfucker can pull on a cigarette so hard. Like the smoke go all the way down the goddamn cigarette. And to pull the cigarette, the tobacco and shit down. This fucker smoked the whole cigarette about two minutes. Then he had some of Nipsey. Damn that Kush OG and crumble it up and crunch it up and sprinkle it from the top all the way down the bottom and licked and rolled that motherfucker. I said, well, goddamn, send something up. Give me a goddamn shotgun because I heard the shit well off the chain. He blowed that shit on me. I said, Ugh. well, goddamn, they was right about that shit, Nip. Your goddamn great, great, great granddad and this damn spirit over here. Rolling up your damn shit. They done went over to Ethiopia and took some of your damn shit over there. The spirit was sitting there smoking it. He said, I'm tired of this goddamn shit. They killed me over there in the war. In Ethiopia. He said, I've been come, trying to get back over here for almost a hundred years. I said, you that goddamn old, the fucker changed, shape shifted, and didn't have no damn skin. He looked like a skinwalker. He said, I'm tired of this shit. I was in the boy. And I was going to get revenge and get just. He said, they've been trying to kill me for years. Every time I try to come back, they try to kill me. He said, I come through DeWitt. DeWitt. And I'm looking at this motherfucker here. And then we start shape-shifting. But then he gave me some of that Kush OG and that blunt and blowed it. And when he blowed it, I said, ugh. That's just, you could talk, you could talk, you could keep what you, you could keep on talking. I thought, I thought I laid back, I, you could say whatever the fuck you want to say. Long you keep smoking that damn shit and blow it over in this way. When we left out of here, I slept good as a motherfucker. I ain't even know I could snow till I heard myself snowing in my damn sleep. The fucker knocked me out. I said, they said that Kush OG was good and everybody wanted it. I tried to duplicate the shit. Damn Nipsey relative got some of the damn OG. I 
guess he know because I was looking at that thing. I guess he know the only way he was going to be able to sit there and look like that. Well, then he gave me some of that shit. You know, I don't smoke. I like my cigar, but I don't know. I ain't heard about that OG. So when he started crumbling that shit up and down, I said, that's Nipsey shit. Don't you blow a little bit? And that motherfucker took a hunk of that shit to whoosh. The shit started doing like this, traveling to my damn nose. And then my eye, that shit hit every hole in my damn head. And I just started saying, oh, oh. Daddy? Jack, that shit had me all the way. Went down to my puss and everything. I said, you can stay. Because he didn't try to fuck with me or nothing. He just wanted to sit. He woke me up. And he leaned on the bed, nigga style. See, even though they come from another place, they got a lot of swag on them. Like Nips had swag, he leaned back, had his leg out, and had it crawl. While he grind that shit, roll and lick it and then roll it up. He stayed here about, to about 5 o'clock in the morning, maybe about 6, just chilling. Just cool as hell. He said, I'm tired of this. Wiped his mouth. He said, they done killed my grandchild. But I was going to rise up in. It's like, I think that thing go back four generations. He said, the daddy ain't nothing nice. The daddy ain't no goddamn joke neither. We just don't know it. I said, how am I going to tell these motherfuckers this shit? That nigga done come in here and blow it all kind of damn shotgun. And my fade damn Ethiopian and you reach from damn shotgun and my damn fade. Hey. He said he gonna get down. He gonna get down. He tired of them. He said they can pick him up. They doing some type of divination. They recognize somebody had done readings on Nipsey's and astrology reading. And they peered deep. They could see that spirit on Nipsey. And they said, if we let him rise up and he going to bring all this chain, that warrior on him was going to get revenge for all the war and the murdering of his ancestors, just slaughtering them and taking their land and their money. They're following over here and doing that to them over here. Uh-uh, I haven't done Samantha yet, but it looks like Samantha will be a rising star that will rise to the occasion to handle the family business and the money, try to keep the family together, the reputation, the politics, protect them from the wolves, from the gang activity, the money to prevent the loss of the money, hold the family together. I see her as being a lady boss. She's forced to do it. And she doesn't mind rising to the occasion. And I saw something about her earlier. I ain't going to get into all of it. But I know from what I saw about her, if she feels that there's a rat in that family that had something to do with hurting her brother. And that's all I'm going to say. Samantha is mannish, just like her brother. She learned a lot from her brother because Nipsey is a gangster and a gentleman. He pulled away from that lifestyle, but he's not a punk. Oh, they peep it. They peep it. Oh, yeah. I saw she got it in her. And, and, and I feel that some people around that family and near them are a little bit nervous. They want to get up, get out of there. They want to get their money and get out of there. Because they don't want Sam to suspect their ass. Because, I mean, like in a heartbeat. Goodbye. I'm, t I'm not saying nothing else. I'm not saying nothing else. That's how her motherfucker ass feel. And, and, and it's for real. 
for real about it. She done said it. She done thought it to herself. Yeah, I I hope that don't come down like that. I, I, uh, she done made up her mind. She gonna fight. She gonna stand tall and let this go. Now you got Tanisha talking about she want her rent money. She want paternity. She, she, she want palimony. See, she not gonna only ask for that baby and ask for that money. Now she finna ask for support for herself. Said Nipsey supported her. Now I know they have the agreement for the child custody. But they did wasn't married and they didn't have a written agreement to take care of her. But she said he did. So now this is going to go out a little longer because she is a type. Well, I'm on y'all doing this to me, trash and y'all. You know what I mean? Tell y'all secrets and make this a full out media blitz campaign. If y'all don't give me my money and make going to try to force them intimidation, humiliation, degradation to get that money. Tanisha want that money. And she feel like she got the upper hand. And if she doesn't get it right off, she's willing to play dirty. This is getting very treacherous. She want that money. She going to fight for the money for herself. Fight for her daughter. And fight for the money that Imani was left by Nipsey. No, she don't want it that easy. Now she want to make them pay. And she has a grudge against Samantha. Samael, she wants to make them pay. Since she can't have him, she wants to take that man, drain his estate. I mean, and the lawyers are going to eat up a lot of it. This is not, I told y'all a few months ago, this was going to drag it out. It was going to be ugly. I don't want to get too much in it, what I saw. I might when I come back the next time. But y'all, I got to go. I told y'all I got to come back in a couple of days. And deal with uh, Kales. I promised the lady. That I was going to come back in a couple of days. We got to deal with him. So I can't sit here all night now. And talk to y'all. I got to get some sleep. And then I got to start R. Kelly's reading tomorrow. Probably tomorrow already. And then I'll come back probably by Friday. Late Friday night. And deal with him. Y'all. Okay. So, I thank y'all. I love y'all. Um, I hope they can put this on YouTube soon. Thank y'all for supporting me and, and clicking like on this and clicking like on the YouTube and spreading the videos around on YouTube. Y'all make my day by loving me and supporting me because there's a lot of people that do the readings that y'all can support and I'm sure you do watch and spread around. But I'm glad y'all love me, support me, and... Spread my videos around and help to, to get me popular and known again. And I also want to shout out that sweet baby, Brene Reads. She's a beautiful baby. And she took my reading the last time and she expounded on it and gave her take on it and picked up the same things I was picking up. And they said so she shouted me out. I listened to it and I really love and admire her because she didn't have to do that for me. And she's just a sweet baby. And I love her and I appreciate her. And I'm glad the young some of the young women are very respectful to me, very kind to me, and supporting me, and you support me, I'll support you back. You share my videos, you shout me out, I'll share yours, I'll shout you out. You click like on mine, I click like on yours. You put comments on mine, I put comments on yours. I don't have time for the drama and women fighting each other and not supporting each other. And two, I appreciate everybody loving me, donating to me to do the work. And I know Catherine. And coming to me for readings. And if you're interested, you can contact me to... Um, at alexisktylervp at gmail.com. But y'all, you know, I got to, whew, I got to get some rest, y'all. And thank you, Blemish. So I'm glad you enjoy me. I enjoy y'all. I love every time I do this with you. <laughs> with you all. And spend time. Oh, thank you. If y'all want to chop pieces up and put them on Instagram and tell people who I am and what I do to read, I don't mind. Because I got to figure out how to get on Instagram and start talking to everybody. Because people keep asking me, say, you need to go on Instagram. You need to start talking. You need to say hello. You need to start doing mini readings on there. I just got so much going on. I can't do all this stuff at one time. So, I will be back in a couple of days, I promise. Because I got to keep my word. Thank you, Cass. How are you? Tell my baby hello. And I'll see you in a couple of days. Or a day, rather. I'm sure it's Thursday. I love you all. Talk to you soon.